Welcome! In this crash course, I'll cover the basics of CICD, and I'll teach you how to set up a pipeline using GitHub Actions and AWS Elastic Beanstalk, and then secure it with Twingate. Whether you're new to CICD or just need a refresher, you're in the right place. CICD stands for Continuous Integration and Continuous Deployment and Delivery. Let's break these down to understand what each component means and how they work together. Continuous integration, or CI, is the practice of frequently merging code changes into a central repository. After each merge, automated builds and tests are run. The primary goal of CI is to detect and fix integration problems early in the development cycle. This means that instead of waiting until the end of a development sprint to merge all changes, developers integrate their work multiple times a day. This frequent integration helps catch bugs early and ensures that the code base is always in a working state. Continuous deployment, or CD, takes this a step further. It automatically deploys all code changes to a testing or production environment after the build stage. This ensures that code is always in a deployable state and significantly reduces the time between writing code and using it in production. It's worth noting that some organizations prefer continuous delivery, which is similar to continuous deployment, but includes a manual approval step before deploying to production. This allows for more control, which can be important in regulated industries. Together, CICD creates an automated pipeline that takes code from commit to production, ensuring quality and reliability at every step. The adoption of CIC practices brings many benefits to software development teams and organizations as a whole. CICD significantly speeds up the release process, improves software quality, and reduces risk by making smaller, more frequent updates. Automated testing and deployment save time, allowing developers to focus on coding and solving problems. This process also fosters better collaboration within the team and provides continuous feedback from users, enabling faster iteration and improvements. Let's break down the key parts of a CI-CD pipeline. Everything starts with version control, like Git. It lets teams collaborate and track code changes. In a CI-CD setup, all code changes are pushed to a central repository, like GitHub, where the pipeline is triggered. After merging code, Automated tests are run to catch any issues. These tests, unit, integration, and end-to-end, -end, help ensure the new code works without breaking anything. Once tests pass, the code is compiled or packaged, depending on the programming language. This step prepares the code for deployment. This automates pushing your code to an environment like staging or production. We'll use AWS Elastic Beanstalk to simplify deployment and scaling. After deployment, it's important to monitor how the app performs using tools like CloudWatch or Prometheus. Gathering feedback helps improve future versions. Now that we understand the components of a CI-CD pipeline, let's look at a real-world example we're going to consider a Python-based e-commerce recommendation system. This system analyzes user behavior and product data to provide personalized product recommendations. Okay, now I'm gonna show you how to set up a CICD pipeline for this recommendations application. So first I'll briefly go over the code for the recommendation application. Now the point of this tutorial is not to actually create this application, but to show how to set up the CICD pipeline. But basically actually the starting file, we have the application.py that's going to create a Flask app. So it's gonna first load the data from these, CS these uh, CSV files. This is just some sample data for this application. This is basically just like a demo application. And then it's going to create these routes. The main one is this to get the recommendations for a, spe a specific user ID. And it's going to 
get the recommendation from our, we have our data manager here and we have our engine, the recommendation engine that's going to provide the recommendations. Now you can go to the GitHub repo and, and check out this code in detail. But again, the main point is how to set up the CACD pipeline. But let me just show you how this would work really quick. So if I just do Python application.py, it's going to run a server. And if we just go to the direct URL, it's gonna say not found, but if we go to slash health, it'll say slash healthy. And then we can do recommend, you can see I've already tested this out, recommend one. So these are the recommendations for user one. These are the, the recommendations for user two. It's basically an API to get uh, recommendations that you could use in a fuller application. So I've already created a GitHub rep repository. And so I'm going to add everything to it. And then I'm just going to push it up to my repo. Now let's get AWS set up. So we have the, we're on the Electric Beanstalk page, create the application. So we are going to create this new environment. I'll do a web server environment, and then I'll do a name. I'll just do CI CD, and it's going to make the environment dash one because I already had one CI CD. So now we can choose Python platform and I'm gonna do Python 3.9 because my program is in Python 3.9. Okay, I'll just keep going down. I can leave all the rest of this as the default settings. And then if I don't already have a service role, I can do create and use new service role. And same with uh, instant profile. You may have to create an instant an instance profile if you don't already have one. Um, here's how you would do that. I'll go to the I am dashboard, then click the roles menu item and create role. For service, EC2. Now you can go to next and we'll add a few policies. AWS Elastic Beanstalk web tier and AWS Elastic Beanstalk worker tier. And finally, AWS Elastic Beanstalk multi-container Docker. Then next and we can name the role AWS Elastic Beanstalk EC2 role. And then we can create the role. Back here, I am going to do next, and then we'll go next. And the next one, we are gonna actually have to make some updates. See all this up here about auto scaling will no longer support the creation of launch configurations. That's why we're gonna make a change here to general purpose three. And then if I scroll down here, we are going to have to change the instance type. If we use these, our quota won't be enough. So we are going to change these to T2 micro and T3 micro. Okay, next. Actually, I could have skipped review because there's nothing else we need to update here. And submit. And now we just have to wait for Elastic Beanstalk to launch the environment. Okay, now that our environment is successfully launched, we have to create another AWS IAM user that will be used by GitHub Actions to do the deploying. We'll go back to the home, go to IAM, go to users, and then create user. So let's we'll call this GitHub actions deployer okay we'll attach policies directly and then i just need to add this administrator access and next and create user okay i'll view the user and then create an access key and we will use third-party service because github actions is a third-party service now we have to add this to github so we'll go to settings, secrets and variables, actions, new repository secret. And we'll set the AW access key to this access key. And then we'll set the AWS secret access key to the secret access key. Now we just have to add some settings, some required configuration files to make this work with Elastic Beanstalk. So I'm gonna create a new file 
and this .eb extension slash python config. And this is our configuration file for Elastic Beanstalk. If you're not going to use Python, you may have to set this up a little differently. It just depends on how you're gonna set it up. But you can see we have a root volume type that we selected. And it's basically how we set up Elastic Beanstalk. Now we have to create our GitHub Actions workflow. So this is going to be in a folder called .github. And then we need another folder called workflows and then a file, deploy.yaml. So here's the deploy.yaml file where we specify the GitHub actions. There's basically two actions, test and deploy. So we are gonna be using the main branch and there's the two jobs, like I said, the test job. So for the test job, we are gonna set up Python, install the dependencies and run the test. And for the deploy job, we are going to generate the deployment package and then deploy on Elastic Beanstalk using our AWS access keys and our secret key that we put into GitHub. We also have this, the application name and the environment name here. And so let's try it out. So I already have it saved. So let's do git add, git commit, and now we can just do git push. Okay, so when it pushes, it should automatically run our GitHub Actions. So to see the Actions running, we'll go to the Actions tab in GitHub. Now, I did a few failed ones before, so the one it's doing right now is this one. Hopefully it works this time. So if we go into it, we can see what's happening. It's currently running the test. So if I click Test, now we can see everything that it's doing and the test finished, and now it's deploying. So hopefully this works correctly. And while it's deploying, we can actually see something happening over in our environment. So if we go into our environment, it now says Elastic Beanstack is updating your environment. So we know it's, it's trying to do something, it's trying to deploy right now. Environment update is successfully completed. So if we go here, you can see that the job is complete. Go here. We can now see we have a green check mark, so it was successful. And now that the action is complete, we can click on this URL here and we can see it's deployed. And if we just go to slash recommend slash then a user number, we can see it's giving the recommendations for that user and it's deployed. And the great thing is, now, whenever we push our code to GitHub, the test will automatically be run and the code will automatically be deployed. We have a full CI CD pipeline. Now that we have our basic CI CD pipeline set up, let's take it a step further and enhance its security. For this, we'll be using Twingate, our sponsor for this video. Many teams need secure, zero trust control for automated tasks like CI CD pipelines. These processes often require access to sensitive resources, making them tricky to secure with traditional methods like deploying processes directly into privileged networks or using legacy VPNs. Both approaches can have security gaps, needing complex rules that are hard to maintain. Twingate solves this by providing simpler, more secure access control without the vulnerabilities of traditional methods. So let's walk through the process of integrating Twingate into our CIC pipeline. CIC pipelines often need secure access to private resources, whether it's pulling from private package registries, executing database migrations, or accessing protected APIs. So I'll focus on the most common use case, which is securing access to private package registries. So I'm gonna show how to modify the CICD pipeline to securely access private packages during builds. So we're on the Twingate website and I just have to create a free account. And then I just create my network. And we'll just skip out of this onboarding and then I'll add a remote network. Now we're just going to do a simulated network just so you can see how this all works. But we're gonna say it's on-premise and it's a private registry network. And then we'll add a resource. And so again, this is a made up URL. We're imagining this is our private package registry that we only wanna be able to access internally. 
now we need to create a service account. So I'll go to team services and then create a service account. And then we'll just call it GitHub Action CI. And then I just need to generate a key. So I'm going to copy this key, go into GitHub, go settings, secrets and variables, actions, and then a new secret. And this one is just going to be called Twingate Service Key. And then I just paste that whole thing and then add the secret. So now to make sure I can access this private company package network in our GitHub Actions, I will need to update the GitHub workflow. So between Setup Python and before install dependencies, I'm going to have to set up and start Twingate because we're imagining we added something to our requirements.txe, something to our dependencies that has to access the private package registry. So I'm just going to add some code here. And so I just added this. So we installed Twingate and then we set up and start Twingate and it used our service key here. And then after that started, we can now install the dependencies. And I just got that code for installing Twingate and starting it right from the official Twingate documentation. So after we get that set up, we can just save that and then we just push that to GitHub and now the pip install command can now access the, uh, private packages securely. And then after installation, Twingate is stopped to clean up the connection. And that's it. That's how easy it is to connect secure resources with your CICD pipeline using Twingate. And there you have it. We've covered the fundamentals of CICD, walked through a real world example of setting up a CICD pipeline, and learned how to secure the pipeline with Twingate. Remember to use your code for good.